Now we'll talk about uh, dilutions. Um, we will do a lab on this. Um, we will use volumetric flask, flasks and do a serial dilution. Um, so when you're when you're performing a dilution, you're basically um, changing the concentration of the solution by increasing the volume. So the molarity of a new solution can be determined from this equation. So, and this is a very important equation. Um, you have m1 times v1 equals m2 times v2, or at the m is your uh, molarity, so this is the molar concentration. Remember what molar concentration is from the previous um, section. Molarity is moles over liters, moles of, sol of solute over liters of solution. Um, and the idea is that molar, so if I have molar concentration and I know volume, then I can figure out moles. So molar concentration times volume gives me moles. So what's really happening here is it's saying that the moles before the dilution equal the moles after the dilution. And that's the moles of your solute, because you're not adding any more um, solute, you're just adding water. So in the beginning here, you're going to have a, a really, um, really large molarity and a small volume. So you have like a big molarity, large concentration, um, small volume because right, you're, you're just going to take a little tiny bit of your really concentrated solution um, and then you're going to increase the volume. So now you're going to have a big volume as your final and a, uh, a, a smaller molar concentration. So the concentration is going to decrease. Um, so if you think about that, moles are staying the same and now you just, instead of having um, you have moles they're going to stay the same and now you're going to have this huge volume so divide by big volume that's going to give you a small number all right so the whole point is that the moles before the dilution equal the moles of solute after the dilution so let's see if we can do one of these problems so how many milliliters how many milliliters looking for milliliters of a three molar sulfuric acid are needed to make 450 mils of a 0.1 molar so these are my final here this is my final m2 is uh, 0 0.10 m1 is 3 molar. So see how the, the initial concentration um, is a lot higher than your final concentration? Our volume here is 450 milliliters, and what we're looking for is our first volume. How many milliliters of 3 molar? So how many mils of your concentrated solution do you need to add? To, um, to add in order to make a 0.1 molar concentration that's 450 mils. Now, since we're looking for milliliters, it's okay to keep this guy in milliliters. We don't have to convert it to, uh, to liters. If this is in milliliters, this is going to be in milliliters. So we're just going to do 3 molar times V1 equals 0.1 molar times V2. And we'll just divide by three. And divide by three here. And you can work that out. So that equals 15 milliliters. Okay, there's a few homework problems that look just like that. Now, another application of uh, molar concentration is using it in stoichiometry. So remember before when we had um, like grams of one substance and we wanted to get to grams of something else, and we would do grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams. Um, now, instead of starting with grams, if you have an aqueous solution, you could say, all right, molar concentration times volume will give me moles. And then I can compare moles of one thing to moles of something else using the chemical equation, and then moles to grams using the molar mass. So in this problem here, they give us a neutralization reaction. So we have uh, a base, calcium hydroxide, and we have nitric acid. And they say, all right, well, how much do we need to neutralize? How, uh, how many grams of calcium hydroxide do we need to neutralize um, a certain amount of nitric acid? So let's write our acid-base reaction here. So I have nitric acid, and I have calcium hydroxide. I'm going to just do a double replacement reaction here. So I write my cations. This is hydrogen. That's H plus. I have calcium over here. The calcium is going to combine now with the nitrate and hydrogen with the hydroxide. So I just make water. 
that's the water, liquid, that's a liquid. Uh, and then to balance it, I'm going to put two here and a two over here. So I need two moles of nitric acid for every one mole of calcium hydroxide. That's how you can read that. Now, this problem says, let's go back to this problem. We have 25 mils of 0.1 molar nitric acid. All right, so 25 mils. Um, so first thing I want to do is find moles. So find moles of nitric acid. So I have 25 mils. But I don't want it to be in, um, so again, think about what molar concentration. Molar is moles over liters. So molar concentration times liters will give me moles. So my molar concentration is 0.1 molar, and I, I have 25 mils. I don't want mils. Remember how to get from milliliters to liters? Divide that by 1,000. That's uh, one liter. So now I have liters, right? That'll cancel. So that's just, what, 0. 0.025 liters. And I'm going to multiply that by the molar concentration. Whoa. The molar concentration, which is 0.1. There we go. All right. So that ends up being like two point five. There we go. Two point five oh times ten to the negative three. Negative three moles of nitric acid. Now I'm going to use the chemical equation. I'm going to start off with okay, 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of nitric acid. I'm trying to get to grams of calcium hydroxide. So I'm going to have moles of nitric acid on the bottom. And I'm going to have moles of calcium hydroxide on top. And I'm going to use the chemical equation to tell me how many of each I have. So I have 2 moles of nitric acid and 1 mole of calcium hydroxide. So now instead of going grams to moles, I did molar concentration times volume gives me moles. And now moles to moles using chemical equation, and then moles to grams using the molar mass. So I'm going to have one mole of calcium hydroxide on the bottom. And then you find the molar mass. You can pause the video and find the molar mass of calcium hydroxide if you want to. Yep, so 74.1 grams. 74.1 grams. So when you work all that out, you get 0.0926 grams of calcium hydroxide. And there we go. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's our final answer. Ah, there we go. All right. Okay, I just really want to briefly mention um, titrations. Titrations are, this is something we'll do in Chem 2. Um, and you have here, you have a burette. This is a burette, and you usually put either um, acid or base, that, that something that you know the concept. In, in Chem 2, we're going to have a standardized base. So we'll know the exact concentration of this base, and we'll put a weak acid in here, and we're trying to find the identity of this weak acid. And the idea is that this is going to turn this even, oh, sorry, this is like a, an even lighter color. Um, this actually went too far. So we're, we're looking for a, a pinkish color. That, that's the end point, and, and that will tell us where the equivalence point is. And that's when the moles of the acid uh, equal the moles of the acid equal the moles of the base. And then we've reached the equivalence point. And so we'll know the molar concentration and the volume of the base, and we will know the uh, volume of the acid, uh, and so we can figure out what the concentration of the acid was, because that's our, our one unknown here. Um, also, if we know the moles of the acid and we know the, um, the grams of the acid, grams over moles gives us the molar mass, and then we can identify our unknown. So we'll do that in Chem 2. Um, we don't really have to worry about it too much right now.